Welcome to this radio video. I'm going to talk a little bit about trunking. What is trunking? Here I am presently listening to local frequencies from the uh, transit bus system in Montreal. You can see that my scanner shows the frequency, the channel that I've programmed it in, but it tells me something. At the bottom it says ED with a ID number right here. ED is for EDAX. It's one type of trunk system. And the ID you see here is the tag that is attached to the communication between uh, the tower and the bus. So this is what you usually have. You'll get all that information in trunking. And what that information enables is that you can program the frequencies and you can let the scanner follow a conversation. So for example, if I'm scanning a conversation, here there's somebody that has a, a mic that's stuck. If I wanna follow a conversation in trunking, I've got here right below a button called trunk. And if I press that button, it gives me ID hold, ID hold on. That means that that 0073 ID that I'm looking at here is going to be hold. My radio is going to respond only when it receives a signal from that ID and none else. So even if there's other communications going around, it's not going to open. It's going to tell me, okay, I'm waiting for that communication to come back. Here you see that 073 just tagged. So what it enables you is to follow a conversation. And why uh, do you need trunking for that? Trunking is a special system. What happens is that you get a repeater system that has many users on it. Typically what's going to happen is that there's more users on the system than available channels most of the time. And in that repeater there's a computer that will actually give IDs out to the transmitters and to the different users when they ask to talk. So what happens, that all happens uh, without any knowledge to anyone. It's automatic. When the operator uh, starts transmitting, the computer in the tower will assign it a ID number that it always, um, usually always is the same for the same companies. And it's going to send to the receiver information to say, oh, uh, go to that frequency. That's where the communication is happening. So the computer and the radio is actually going to tune the proper frequency. And in trunking, every time a conversation is going on, what's happening is that the frequency hops or changes all the time. It's a way to actually make the transmitter uh, more efficient with all the users. So as we're talking along, frequencies change, change, and change all the time. For example here, I'll follow this one. You see that it's on. Look at the frequency. And when it's going to talk again with an answer or another um, operation with that same conversation, it's going to show you that the frequency is different. As you see here, 863.375. And if there's an answer or if there's another communication, it's going to show up on another frequency. So my radio here knows where to find this ID and where to find these communications. And that's trunking. There are several types of trunking. There's a Motorola, there's EDAX, um, Ericsson, there's, um, um, I, I forget the other ones, but there's like three or four different um, trunking systems. There's also PO25, I believe, 
or P25. And so all of these have different ways of uh, actually working. So for example, mine here can follow the Motorola Type 1, Type 2 and the EDAX, Ericsson EDAX types. And it's basically 90% of the repeaters here in Montreal. Uh, most of these use all of one of these variants. Uh, of course, every year there are new systems coming up and that's why you might want to stay uh, with recent scanners. For example, this Pro 92 works well for trunking, but it's an old scanner and it does work in an old-fashioned way for trunking. And the new ones will have uh, typically faster response time, better response time, and also will um, often have the new digital modes of trunking that it can actually find and go through. So basically this radio follows the communications on these systems and more and more um, trunking is popular. Why? Because it's a very efficient way of using a frequency tower. Before the uh, trunking, if you had 100 users using a tower, a lot of them would have to share frequencies and what happened is that that frequency if you would transmit both at the same time you generate interference with each other. In trunking, if three people of different companies want to talk, the computer is going to assign three different frequencies automatically to make sure there's no interference between all of them. So. Um, Trunking is part of the world now, and so if, if you really are serious into listening to communications, I think a trunk scanner is the way to go. Now, the drawback of a trunk scanner is that you often need to have lists of the frequencies on your local area frequencies for the trunk system. And that's one thing that you'll have to find because you'll have to program those in a scanner and some systems like for example this EDAX system for uh, my the transit system is even more complex because you have to enter the frequencies in a certain order and put the control channel on the first channel so that it can actually find the ID and what does the control channel sound like well here it is this is a control channel So if you scan, maybe you've noticed that you hear these types of noises all around. Maybe you'll uh, find that you, for example, scan. If I, all of these noises and these, this is a Motorola type trunk control channel. This is what controls the different radios that are transmitting. So you got modes like EDAX and LTR and Motorola. So depending on what you want to hear, you choose the type of um, trunking system on your scanner and once you've programmed the frequencies and found the frequencies and programmed everything all you have to do is just scan around and when you want to follow a conversation then all you have to do is press the trunk button to simply hold on to a conversation so that's basically what trunking is uh, even though you can buy a basic scanner and still have lots of fun listening to these signals, a trunk scanner will have a possibility to follow conversations. Um, if you do the same, if I listen to the 800 megahertz spectrum with this scanner, for example, uh, what's going to happen is that on this one, I don't have trunking, so what's going to happen is that I'll be able to hear this, the, the transit system. It's just that I'll have to scan and try to find where the conversation is actually going on on the different channels. 
and that can get a little annoying. Uh, you'll probably get more random communications coming through. So uh, that's trunking. It's uh, not the very technical way of uh, explaining it, but it's the visual and uh, hopefully the easiest way for everyone to understand what trunk is. And uh, hope that uh, if you have a trunk scanner or you're planning to buy one, you'll have fun. It's a great way to actually uh, get into the radio hobby and uh, makes things much, much easier once everything is programmed to listen and follow conversations. What's also interesting is that with trunking, you can uh, see the tags and uh, find what company uses what tag. So afterwards, you know that, okay, when it's uh, tag 4438, that is UPS, for example. And every time you find that, you will be able to follow it. What's cool also is that most scanners that have trunking have alphanumeric displays like this one. So you can take that and actually write, oh, UPS. You can identify with letters what you're listening to. So that's also a very, very nice advantage. So for example, um, one that I've actually tagged here is uh, the police. So if I listen to the, the police, notice that it says police on my display because I've decided to tag police. And you see here is a PL tone. That will be in another video I'll show you what the PL tone is and why it exists. So hope you enjoyed the video. 73. Je confirme qu'on a localisé l'individu et je confirme qu'il est ultra désagréable, mais c'était en haut.